Training programming can be quite complex. There are a number of different variables to consider and that's even before you start thinking about as an individual, what do you need in terms of trying to construct a training program that works for you? So you might be thinking about your experience level in the gym. You might be talking about any previous injuries, exercises you don't like. You might be thinking about your current level of muscle mass, any specific muscle related goals that you've got. There are so many variables that go into creating a training program that's good that it can feel really, really complex. And if you're trying to do this on your own, you're sat there listening or watching to this right now, and you're finding that trying to get a training program together, pulling together all these pieces of information that you find online where this guy says, you know, high volume is great. This guy says low volume is great. This guy says train once a week in terms of a body part. This guy says two or three times a week. And this guy says about like exercise selection, it should be this, that, and the other. It's all quite confusing. So what I wanted to do in this episode of the show is really bring it down to basics. Four basics of building a training program. Now, what I won't be able to do is personalize this podcast so it's very, very specific to you and it's gonna give you all the answers. I just can't do that in one video because there are going to be nuances, there are going to be things that are specific to you that I just won't know. So this podcast is about giving you those four broad categories, those four broad guidelines that you need to start thinking about and giving you some ideas and suggestions. No hard and fast rules, no set guidelines, there are lots of variables to consider. But what I'm going to try and do is give you that framework from which you can start adding. Maybe over time you start to fuck about with what you add and subtract in a program, trial and error, you make it work for you, and then you find the perfect training program that really does give you the results that you want. So I'm Simon Mitchell, online body transformation coach, founder of Iron Paradise Fitness. If you're watching on YouTube, Thanks so much for tuning in. Give the video a little bit of a like and a subscribe. That would be absolutely awesome. If you're listening on a podcast platform, a rating and review would be equally awesome as well. So the four components we're gonna be looking at are volume, intensity, frequency, and exercise selection. Starting first with volume. So what is training volume? Well, basically it's the amount of work that your muscles are going to do over the course. Usually you measure it over the course of a workout or a week or both. Now, there are different approaches to training volume. Like I said right at the beginning, some people will say high volume, some people will say low volume, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what does that mean? What does volume actually mean? Now, when we look at volume, the traditional way of looking at it is sets times reps times weight. So effectively, how much load and mass are you lifting within a given exercise? You can then relate that to a given muscle group and you can see how much load you're lifting. You can try and progressively overload that over time, thereby increasing volume and so on and so forth. That's the basic thing. But that may be unnecessarily complicated or unnecessary level of detail to go into in order to make progress because that's what you want really is how can I make the most amount of progress with the least amount of effort that's kind of the nirvana that we're all chasing when it comes to building muscle no one wants to put in a fuckload of work that gives no return that's just fucking stupid what we want to do is say well I want to get the maximum amount of results for the littlest amount of brain power and effort because If you get into that scenario, you're more likely to stick to it. If I started to reel off for the next hour and a half, a whole raft of things that you could start thinking about within your training program, you probably wouldn't implement any of them because it would feel too overwhelming, too much like hard fucking work. I'm not gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is think about maybe just working sets. You might wanna think therefore about how many working sets are you gonna do per muscle group so that you can start to see some change in your body, building muscle. Effectively, that's what we're after, right? So some real rough guidelines. Again, these are guidelines, no hard and fast rules. You might be different. You might need something completely different. So when it comes to working sets per muscle group within a given workout, it might be anywhere between four to 12 sets per muscle group. That's just like real rough because it really depends on 
your goal. Because obviously if you're programming because you want more chest volume, you've got more chest and not so much of shoulders and things like that, that really dictates how many working sets of a muscle group you'll get within a workout. It will also depend on how your workout's structured. So there's lots of variables going on there. But broadly speaking, like four to 12 per muscle group would be roughly speaking where you'd see most training programs. Again, huge generalization, but it gives you a bit of a rule of thumb to kind of work with. Then what you might think about is how many working sets am I gonna be doing in a muscle group over the course of a week? Now, again, that will vary. If you look at, if you go and listen to or watch the interview that I did with Mike Isratel all about training volume, that's an hour or an hour and 20 minutes or so, really in-depth detail about things like the volume landmarks that he talks about MRV, so that's a maximum recoverable volume, minimum adaptive volume, things like this. And you can go into that and there really is some interesting information about how to think about how many sets per muscle group. But again, maybe anywhere between like eight to 20 sets per week, depending on the goal, depending on what you're trying to build, maybe what you're prioritizing within a program. One thing I've learned, I've currently just gone through as we record this video, of a bit of an experiment when it comes to higher volume training. Now, what I do at Iron Paradise Fitness is I don't like to experiment on my clients. That would be fucking weird and that's definitely not what they pay me for. But I do like to keep open-minded to different concepts, different ways of training, different ways of training programming, all these different sorts of things. So I've gone through a bit of an experiment over the course of the last 11 weeks, there's still one week to go, of setting up my training program to really push to these theoretical maximum recoverable volumes over the course of a 12 week period. And that's been a case of going from something like a slightly lower volume and then increasing incrementally like a couple of sets every two weeks up to the point where I hit this maximum recoverable volume, this theoretical um, number, which is different per muscle group. So you might find that like side delts can take more volume than, I don't know, calves or something like that. So you can get all of these different numbers. Now, what I've learned from that is you really have to focus in on specific muscle groups that you want to prioritize. I tried to prioritize too much. I was prioritizing uh, side delts, chest, lats, quads, calves, all sorts. And it just turned into too much volume. It was too fatiguing on the body, very difficult to recover from. It was very difficult to get a workout within a reasonable time. So bear that in mind. If you are someone who's, you want to push and you want to get as many sets in as possible, you might have to, for a 12 week program, say, right, now I'm gonna prioritize glutes. Ladies out there, maybe you want to get those peachy glutes, those you know rock solid butt cheeks, and therefore you prioritize glutes. But that might mean that because that's gonna take up quite a lot of volume, quite a number of working sets, that you're gonna to have to bring down something else. So maybe you're not interested in a huge amount of chest volume. Maybe you do like four sets a week or something like that, just to keep it bubbling along and maintaining. But over the course of the 12 week program, you don't really increase that volume because that's not a priority because you've got all of these other muscle groups that you really are trying to push. So give that a consideration, but anywhere between sort of this like A, 20 sets, working sets per week. But again, it really makes a huge difference on what your priority is and what your actual focus is as well. So next up is intensity. So this is the difficulty or the degree of stimulus that you're applying to a muscle. Now this might come in the form of just pure effort. So maybe in terms of the execution of the exercise like we've talked about on previous podcasts. So how intensely, how much bone to bone tension are you creating on a particular muscle? How, um, how much load as well that would come into the equation. So how much weight are you putting on the bar? These two things added together, generally speaking, are the core components of the intensity. So when you're thinking about your programming, are you gonna program by load? So for example, are you gonna do things as a percentage of your theoretical one rep max? Or are you gonna focus in on effort? So like a reps in reserve type of thing, which we've spoken about on previous podcasts as well. You could do those two types of approaches. There's also another approach where this is one that I popularly use with my 
uh, my clients because it's very, very easy to understand. Pick a rep range and then you pick a weight that gets you at the bottom end of that rep range. Let's say you're working in the eight to 10 rep range. So you pick a weight for a given exercise that you can perform eight reps pretty solid and the eighth rep is pretty tough. That gets you that point. So then your goal then is to add one rep incrementally as frequently as possible. It's probably not gonna be week after week, but as frequently as you can. When you get to the top end of that rep range for at least two sets in a row, then you up the weight. When you up the weight, you'll probably come back down to the bottom end of the rep range, and then you start the process again. That's basically gonna help you manage effort, manage load, and also progressively overload at the same time. If you add on top of that, the fact that you can apply better execution, you can get better at performing an exercise, you've really got kind of three or, you know, two or three ways of actually making sure that you're keeping progress going. But if you're someone who really wanna dive into the whole reps in reserve thing, then remember, you know, you can kind of think about it from a point of view of if you are a beginner, 10 reps in reserve. So reps in reserve, if you're not familiar with the term, is where zero reps in reserve would be absolute concentric failure. So in, on a bench press, that would be you can't do any more reps and the bar is crashing into your chest. That's zero reps in reserve. So it's like how many reps have you got left in the tank before you absolutely reach that momentary concentric failure? Now, for a beginner, you can probably go right back to like 10 reps in reserve because you can get a lot of progress on not very much stimulus. Whereas if you're more intermediate or advanced, you might go anywhere from between five reps in reserve right through to, you know, on a regular basis, sort of like one or two. And then you, when it's appropriate to do so, you could go to absolute failure, but you manage that based on when you feel is the right time to go to, to failure. You won't go to failure on every single exercise because you'd be absolutely bollocks. Then we come on to frequency. Now, popular theory right now is that more frequency is better for hypertrophy. So the bro split of old where you just did an arm day, a leg day, a chest day, a shoulder day, a back day, because in a seven day period, you probably only get into those muscle groups once. The theory was that that wasn't as beneficial as doing it multiple times per week. But in reality, is that yes, the bro split probably isn't going to be the best way to adjust your training or set up your training for most people. But really the, again, like there's still no hard and fast rules on whether it should be two or three or whatever. It's really how fast can you recover from that previous training session? Because there's no point going into the next one just because Two, twice a week is more beneficial, but if you're not recovered, then arguably that is the wrong time for you to go back in the gym and chain that muscle group. So you really have to judge it based on your recovery. Now that might mean that you need to adjust your volume that you're putting on each muscle group over the course of each workout. It might mean you need to adjust your total weekly volume. It might mean you need to focus on your nutrition and your recovery a little bit more. All of those sort of factors come into play, but frequency, Generally speaking, most people, again, if you're brand, brand new to the whole thing, then recovery might be a bit slower, but generally speaking, maybe like three to five days is gonna be the rough sort of time where people are gonna be 100% recovered. It might be even less for some people. So therefore, that probably on that time frame lends itself to that twice a week. So if you can, set up your training program so that you are training muscle groups multiple times per week if you can recover from it. If you can't recover from the training, either adjust the training volume or adjust the training split in some way, shape or form. Lastly then on our four step list is exercise selection itself. Now this can get really complicated. On previous episodes of the show, we've talked about resistance profiles, strength curves, things like that, and trying to get them to match or at least understand those resistance profiles so that you can pair them with other exercises. And a very, very quick example would be for example, a squat. So a squat, traditional squat, where you, you go down in that movement, at the bottom of that squat, you are weak, your muscle is at its weakest at that point, but the load is at its heaviest, the exercise is at its heaviest. As you start to stand up, your muscles get stronger, but that load actually gets lighter. Now that is a situation where the resistance profile and the strength curve don't match, they don't marry together. 
But that's not necessarily saying that that's a bad exercise and you shouldn't do it. In the simplest way to do it, I mean, you could use accommodating resistance to change up that exercise if you wanted to, but the real simple way to think about it is pairing that exercise which works the muscle in the position that kind of it didn't quite get a full challenge in with the previous exercise. So it really didn't get a full challenge in that short position at the top of that movement. Now a leg extension, seated leg extension, would do just that. So when you think about the programming, pairing a squat with a leg extension would be a good thing. Then you don't necessarily have to think about bands, chains and things like that. You just pair those two exercises together and away you go. That's one way to think about it. If you're into the little bit more detail of those things and you understand those things, you can start to do that and manipulate your program from that perspective. But there are some general rules that, again, probably one thing to remember is that you can make, if you put in like really good effort, really good execution, and you work hard and you progressively overload, you can build muscle with the shittest program on earth. And even if your program isn't the greatest thing on paper, if you enjoy it and you put effort in, you will build muscle. So don't necessarily think that if I haven't got the best training program ever, there's no point even starting. That's a bad way to think about it. But having said that, there's probably a few rules that you can generally go by that will give you some good base level start points. And that would be like, maybe think about utilizing compound exercises in the main. So multi-joint movements, so squat, bench press, deadlifts, all these different sorts of movements, shoulder press, that use multiple joints, probably a good place to start. Then supplement in isolation exercises depending on your goal. So for example, if you want some side delts, maybe some side delt exercises that really work on that side delt specifically. If you wanna build biceps, triceps, again, some isolation exercises might work well there. But you're not basing your whole program on bicep curls. That would probably not be the greatest program, although you'll build some great biceps. Then you wanna think about free weights and machines. There's you know, nothing wrong with machines. There's nothing wrong with free weights. Use both, don't get attached to exercises, don't get attached to the thought that machines are shit, free weights are great, all that sort of stuff. They're just pieces of equipment. They're tools in your toolbox to use. Then think about the actual the number of exercises that you pick should be consistent with the volume you're trying to hit and the goals that you're trying to hit. So again, if you wanna build your glutes, but you're selecting a lot of tricep extensions, probably not a good idea. So make sure that the exercises you select fit the goal that you're trying to achieve. So kind of looping back through everything, if you focus in on the volume, so making sure you're hitting some basic level of volume in a workout per muscle group and over the course of a week per muscle group of the ones that you really want to focus in on, that will start to build you some muscle. If you want to increase that training volume, increase those working sets over time, that's a logical thing to do, but don't pick too many muscle groups to focus on in any one sort of 12 week program. Probably not the way to go. When it comes to intensity, think about that from an effort perspective, but also from a load perspective as well. So try to increase effort and try to increase load over the course of your training program as well. Then you wanna think about frequency. So when it comes to frequency, for most people, training a muscle group multiple times per week, especially if it's within your priority and within your goals, is largely gonna be a good thing for most people. But really think about what can you recover from? And that should dictate the frequency with which you start to program exercises for various different muscle groups. And then finally, what you wanna think about is the actual exercise selection itself. You can keep it really simple and go with those rules that I suggested. So major on compound movements, add in some isolation stuff where you need it. Think about using weights and machines and think about the number of exercises being aligned to your goal and what you're trying to achieve. So hopefully this episode of the show really give you something to think about when it comes to programming your own training. Hopefully, again, starting to really simplify things down. I think that the key thing that you should take away is that start simple and build. Build on a solid foundation or build on just some basics. Get some basic exercises in place once you start to get some progress, when you start to 
get familiar or you get more knowledge, then start to incorporate things. Don't get this kind of thing where I'm not going to start until it's fucking perfect. Don't get into that sort of situation. Start, start basic, apply some of those basic rules, work hard, effort, try to increase the ability with which you execute an exercise. And on top of that, add load over time when it's safe to do so and when you can still exercise that, execute that exercise effectively and you will make progress. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode of the show. If you did, like I said before, like it, subscribe to the channel, rating, review, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this as well would be absolutely awesome. Helps us grow the reach of the show. But for now, all I'm gonna say is thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. Keep living the lean life and I'll see you for the next episode of the show.